see how Emily Hendricks looks? I didn't notice. I bet she's gained 10 pounds. That woman hasn't just said she was born with letting herself go like that. Well, she should have eaten at our house tonight. That was a great little supper you put together. I'm starving. We're going over to the Caldwell's later for a stack. Now, stop fussing. The invitation said 6 o'clock sharp. I couldn't help it. Say, uh, Helen, what are these kids cooking up, anyway? Oh, it's probably a play or a pageant, something like that. I'm dying to see it. I think the whole idea of the kids surprising us is just funny. Well, I wish they'd surprise us at 7 o'clock. Oh, look at him. Hey, slow down, Mr. Rogers. You're not going to run a four-minute mile at your age, are you? Oh, good evening, Mr. Mrs. Bates. Guess I was in kind of a hurry, but Joey told me not to be late. What time is it? Oh, 10 to 6, plenty of time. Oh. I was rushing to close up the store early. Essie Loomis had to come in and browse around among the patent medicines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I was a little snappy with her. Well, that woman just about drives me out of my mind. Oh, Mrs. Smith, how do you do? It's so nice to see evening, how do you. Good evening, Miss Loomis. Do? <laughs> Liver extract, it was. I'll see you inside. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> oh, look, dear. Now, what you were telling me about? Oh, no, darling, it was the wrong color. Well, I thought really. it was pretty. Uh, that's Miss Amy Guinness. I think I'll just go back. Let's start the show. Together. Hey, Bobby, let's get started. Nobody's after hey. a party. Let's go. There's Kobe. Hey, Kobe. Kobe. I need Mr. Kovaleski. It's all right you call me Kobe, Bobby. Sit down there. Here, you want me to sit? Oh, I sit over there. It's good enough. This is where you're supposed to sit, Mr. Kovalevsky. You have to. I have to. All right, here. Say, Kovalevsky, you're going to be the guest of honor? And a boy, Kobe! Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. Let's start the show. If that isn't the best looking dress, that Parker girl doesn't show up at all next to her. Make a joke, Susie. You make a joke. That's not a good joke. Murder, not good. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, Toby! Sit down. Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, I, uh, I know as little about what's going on here as any of you, but whatever it is, we're going to have order. So 
sense in giving these children any more frightened than they are right now. All right, now we'll talk, but one at a time. Right. Well, I'd certainly like uh, to know just, what... Just a moment, Julia, please. Joey, are you in charge of this? No, sir, we all are, all the kids. Well, do you know it's not very funny to accuse a man of murder, even in a joke? Yes, sir. Mr. Wood... I think you'd better apologize to Mr. Kovaleski. Uh, sir... No, no, Mr. Wood, which is, it's, it's all right. <laughs> just, just kids. I, 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 I know kids for 30 years. They, they have a joke. It's all right. All right. All right, I think we can call an end to this. Oh, but don't forget the supper after the basketball game on Friday night, everybody. But Mr. Woodridge! Dad! Uh, pardon me. Uh, oh, I was thinking that the children have worked so hard to surprise us. <laughs> All the whisperings and preparations. Well, my boy, Joey, uh, made me give him two weeks' allowance in advance so that he could... Well, I see now it was to buy that, uh, that, that gavel there. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a very good idea, but uh, Mr. Kovaleski doesn't mind. I mean, uh, it'd be a shame to disappoint the children. Maybe no one agrees with me, I, I don't know. Thanks. For sure, let them go ahead. It's their party. I don't know. Toby? Sure. They, they, they're good kids. Oh, all right. Now, does anyone want to say anything? Order in the court. <laughs> the court has appointed Harold Wright as your lawyer, Mr. Kovaleski. Any objections? Oh, no, Your Honor. I got a good lawyer. Hey, Harold. <laughs> Counsel for the prosecution, Tommy Prince. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to prove that the man sitting over there in that chair, Mr. Peter Kovaleski, is a murderer. <laughs> we're going to prove that the murder he did was pre... was was premeditated. Five months and six days ago, something happened that maybe most people in Carson Corners don't think about much anymore. I'm talking about the time Billy McGinnis fell off the fire escape right outside this door and was killed. No. What are you trying to do, you crazy Daddy, look? Daddy, don't! You keep away from please, me. Please, please, Dad, you've got to listen. You ought to be whipped for letting them make a game out of your own brother's death. Dad! Why, it isn't a game. Prosecution will continue. It, it was an accident. That's what everyone said. The railing was busted, uh, broken, and Billy fell through it. Well, we don't think he fell. We think he was pushed through the railing and killed by Mr. Kovaleski. What? What do you say about me? That's a lie. I take you and... Ah! You touch him and I'll break your head open. Now listen to me, Tommy. You know what you just said? You know what it means, Tommy? Answer me! Yes, I do. You're not playing with kid stuff, Tommy. This isn't just a cute little idea anymore. We never said it was. Do you have anything more to say? Yes, sir. Well, then say it. I'm listening. Jack, I, 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 uh, uh, maybe you'd better sit down, Covey. Counsel for the defense, Harold Wright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we all know Mr. Kovaleski. Covey. Covey has been a janitor in our school for 
Well, for over 30 years. We see him every day. I think we ought to get to the point all this Let's nonsense hear about... what he has to say. Well, the idea is, is that Kobe is our friend. Kobe likes kids. And anyone who likes kids the way Kobe does could never have pushed Billy McGinnis off the fire escape. He never could. Everybody knows that about Kobe. Call the first witness. Bert Hendricks. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that I hope you got? Yep. What's your name? Bertram Frank Hendricks, Jr. Sit down. Hi. Bert, did you know Billy McGinnis? Sure. He was my best friend in the whole school. Did you see him the day he died? Sure. I saw him every day. He sat right next to me in geography and arithmetic. Science place. You know, he was the same size as me. Just answer the questions. Okay. Bert, tell us what happened when you saw Billy that day. Okay. Well, it was about 11 o'clock because Mr. Woodbridge's class was just having recess. Most of the kids were playing games and stuff in the yard. I was going up to finish my history homework before the class started. You know how Mr. Woodbridge gets sore. <laughs> Fixed right now. Do uh, you want to help me with the tools, Bert? No, I can't. I gotta go in. Holy cow. Hiya, Bill! Hi! Where the hell happened to me? Hello, Billy. Hi. Uh, do you want to help me get the tools? Yeah. Good. I saw Billy McGinnis coming out of Miss Frank's room. because Billy saw the community fund money he stole. You heard what he said. What about that? Open your mouth. What about it? I did. He, he don't tell the truth. Well, what is the truth, then? Let's hear it. Look at him. Look at his face. No, no, I, I, I never pushed him. Never. They lie. Children. They lie to you. Crazy children. <laughs> Miss Frank, she gave me the community fund cans to hold. She gonna turn them in the next day. I keep them overnight. Nobody should steal. I don't steal. Ask her. You ask Miss Frank. Miss Frank? Oh, Miss Frank! She's not here. She had to go to Centerville. Her sister is sick. This is Exhibit A. Joy Rogers found them behind the boiler in the basement last Friday. Last Friday? That's five months later. Do you hear that? Five months. He stole them. That's enough for me. Listen to me, everybody. Listen. There's a boy dead. Your boy, McGinnis. No, no, no. You don't understand. Miss Frank forgot. She forgot. She forgot about the boy. She forgot. I, I, I never steal. I, I, I didn't. 
didn't kill a child. How could I kill a child? I, I don't. I, I swear. You swear. I'll show you how to swear. What are you doing? You're only children. All right, now swear. Swear. I swear. You're a liar. Room? Shame. Our sons and daughters will see us behaving like animals. What will they think of us? The Avenger. You're so ready to punish. Did you see this man commit a crime? Did you? Did any of you actually see him? Maybe it was, like the children said. Maybe it was, but this is certainly no, no way. It wasn't, as they say. I tell the truth. Shut up! Now we've had enough talk around here. Let's do something about him! <laughs> Mr. Prince! Mr. Prince! Let him talk! Sit down. Let him talk. Didn't you fix the railing? I, I was going to fix. Oh, you were going to. I, I, I was going to fix. I, I went downstairs into my basement. I, I asked Billy he should help me carry the tools. Sometimes they get a little heavy for an old man and... and What's the matter, Billy? Nothing. I was eating my lunch, little worse pie, coffee, and apple. The railing was broken, and I, I was hungry. I didn't know. I, I didn't know that. Children, stand back. Oh, boy. Who, who is it? It's Billy McGinnis, Mr. Woodbridge. Yeah, it's Billy. Gee, you didn't pick him up, Mr. Woodbridge. But, Mr. Woodbridge, you talked that to yourself and first day we should never move the body. But, Mr. Woodbridge, don't you remember? But I do know this. The man who picked Billy up and carried him inside is just as much a murderer as if he had taken a gun and shot him. That's right, Mr. Woodbridge. A murderer! Look like the boy was lying on the ground. I... Well, I... Well, what about him? Who knows if he came up out of the basement? I was right there and I didn't see him. How do we know he's telling the truth? Maybe he was up on the fire escape. Maybe he did push the boy. Nobody saw him. All we know is what he tells us in his broken 
English? Wait, wait. Did you see him? Did you? See, did anyone see him come up out of the basement? Did you? Did you? The boy was lying on the ground. He shouldn't be left to lie there on the ground. Is there anything else, Tommy? Well, the defense attorney is supposed to cross-examine. No, no. Any more facts? Well, no, sir. It wasn't supposed to be like this, Mr. Rogers. All this yelling. It was supposed to be a trial. Please, I want to say something. Susie, you sit down. No, let her be, Seth. I won't let her continue this stupid farce. No, no stop her. No, I can't help it. I have to. I have to. It's all right, Susie. You go ahead. <coughs> I wasn't in school the day of the accident. Mommy wouldn't let me go because I had a cold. It was about 12.30. I was sitting on the couch making a horsetail when Daddy came in for lunch. Maybe if you could tell some of your friends not to catch the measles, maybe I could get a little sleep. How's the horse's tail? Nice. What are we watching? Buster Keaton. Oh, that's fine. I'll get it. Hello? To the hospital, Daddy. I'll tell him I'll call him back. Dad, Miss Phillips, she says she wants you to come over there right away. I said I'd call her back. Daddy, she says it's urgent. <laughs> something about a fall or something. I can't hear her so well. <laughs> oh, one of these days that woman's going to drive me nuts. Somebody skins a knee and right away it's an emergency with her. <laughs> Tell her I'm having lunch. I'll be there in half an hour. <laughs> Daddy, I had to. I had to. I didn't know. How, how, how do you know it? It was half an hour, Seth. Seth, I was <laughs> exhausted. I... I was watching a Buster Keaton movie, Seth. It, a very funny man, Buster Keaton. He never smiles. It, I was watching a Buster... The boy was dead when I got there. I never could have saved him, never. Well, it happens. Do you think it never happens? People make mistakes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good. He says he's sorry. You hear that, everybody? Our doctor says he's sorry. Well, I've been in your house, doctor, and had your cold enlistments poking me in my chest and back. What were you listening to then? Buster Keaton? Stop it! Stop it! He'll be ridden out of town on a rail. Let him alone. He said he couldn't have saved him. Maybe he was lying. Why? Let me go. Let you go. You'll be handcuffed. Let him go. What are you doing? Let him go. It's all right, Susan. Susan, it, it's all... Listen. Listen to me, everybody. Listen. We're going off in all directions here. 
This is the man we're trying. Let's not forget that. He's as guilty as Cain. I know it, and so do most of the good people in this room know it. Do they? Do you know it, Mr. Prince? Oh, Mr. Woodbridge, does he know it? Oh, oh Dr. Caldwell, does he? Oh, oh, Mr. Wright, do you know who the guilty man is, Mr. Wright? How? Our school is an old, dirty building that should have been condemned and torn down a long time ago. Now, well, you're president of the Chamber of Commerce. Why don't we have a new school? Where do you suppose we get the money? Well, I hear that the Chamber of Commerce is, is going to rebuild Main Street with new storefronts and new sidewalks and even a statue. Now, that'll take a lot of money. Now, what does that prove? I'm a criminal. Caught me off to jail. Beautifying Main Street is the same as stealing money from the community fund. Right? What does this man mean by coming here and making a fool out of me? He's the same as any of us. He lives here. You've got a good right to speak up, Doctor. Then I'll speak up, since my husband isn't good enough to talk to you anymore. But I don't think that worries him. He has something else to think about, and so do you. Mr. Rogers didn't make a fool of you. Nobody can do that for you. You have to do it for yourself. Yes, Caldwell. You people, what do you know? Well, why don't we have a new school? You think I'm going to stand around here and listen to this? Get your coat, Julia. Come on, Answer Harold. the question. Why don't we have a new school? Yes, Harold. why don't we have a new school? Come on, son. Yeah. Harold. Oh, now, don't tell me it's all over. I just this second... Now, 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 here's the proof we've been waiting for. I just this second got back from Centerville. My sister's down with the virus. Oh, what a nice crowd. Now, maybe we'll hear the truth. For heaven's sake, what's happening? Is this some kind of a joke? Miss Frank, tell them. Tell them. They, they say crazy things. Kovaleski, tell them what? What are you talking about? Would you mind telling me? Miss Frank, we have some questions to ask you. Uh, Miss Frank... Now, Rogers, let's get this over with. Uh, we would like to question you. Miss Frank, would you please... Question me? Well, what have I done? Oh, you've done nothing. Please, would you... Uh, hold on. What about the money? Ask her. What's he talking about? Will you tell the woman what is going on? I don't understand. Please, just everyone sit down again. Please, Miss Frank. This isn't a joke, is it? No, Miss Frank, it isn't a joke. Just sit with me, will you? Joy, go over there and sit in my seat. What have my children done? Well, they've... they've had a trial. They've accused Mr. Kovaleski of pushing Billy McGinnis to his death. What? That's fantastic! Well, they... they... they uh, they say that Billy died because he discovered that, that Mr. Kovaleski he had stolen some money. Some of the people here believe him. But they don't. How could they? Oh, they pushed Billy. But the railing was broken. Everyone knows that. Well, look, we had enough talk here. Now we want some answers now. That's right. Now, Miss Frank, you took up a collection for the Just community. Uh, let, let me finish, then let me ask you questions. Miss Frank, did you know that the railing was broken before Billy fell? Could I? Well, if I had, I'd certainly... Frank, I will... Alice, don't be frightened, Alice. Say what you want to say. Everybody can, even the children. Well, that's why we're here, isn't it? Well, you say what you started to say. I just remembered something before. We can't hear her. I just remembered something before. I'm in Miss Frank's class, and because I'm so good at spelling, she lets me be the board eraser monitor. I mean, to clean the board erasers when they have spelling. The day Billy was killed, I went outside with the erasers around quarter to 11, like I always did. Uh, I'm telling you, Colby. Sometimes this inspection business is for the birds. Uh, yes. How's that railing holding up, Kobe? I say, Kobe, how's that railing holding up? Good. Well, it ought to. Say, uh, when did they build this fire escape, Kobe? Oh, I don't know. Maybe about 1946, around there. I guess that's about right. Well, that feels good and solid. Oh, you didn't have to come up here with me, Kobe. Oh, I had to get my broom. You know, Kobe, you'd think that inspecting buildings for the county would be a pretty good deal. Well, I'm telling you, I go nuts half the time just looking at things. 
I'd almost like to quit it. But the money is steady. You know how it is. Steady is the most important. <laughs> and how? I suppose this railing is solid all the way up. Yes, I keep it good. Okay, Colby. Give you an A for effort. <laughs> well, young lady, you've had about enough time to clean a dozen erasers. Oh, Miss Frank, I'm sure they were awfully chalky. Says Mr. Prince, he must be inspecting the building. I wonder if Mr. Kobaleski told him about that loose railing. I noticed it this morning. Uh, now, that might just get Mr. Kobaleski into all kinds of trouble. Harold, what are you doing? Well, I told you to hurry. Now, go on in the school, please. All right, Alex. No, I'll just wait till Mr. Prince leaves, and then I'll tell Mr. Kobaleski. Well, you just keep things in shape, Kobe. Everything looks fine. Good. I was going to. I was going to say something. I. Well, I just didn't want to get anyone into trouble. You understand? Don't you understand? It would have been so easy. He was right there. Mr. Prince was right there. So what? Why doesn't somebody say something? Listen, the rail... Well, well, I... I uh, please, uh, Mr. French, be seated, will you? Uh, Mr. Wright, uh, Mr. Wright, may I ask you a question? On the day Billy died, there was collection taken up in school for the community fund. You were in charge of it? Well, what did you do with the money? The money? Can. Community fund cans like those, yes. I, I gave it to Mr. Kovalevsky to hold. Why? Well, I didn't have any place to keep it safe, and I, I couldn't turn it into the fund until the next day. I... But, Rogers, I... I never turned it in. I, I completely forgot it. I, I never gave it another thought from that day to this. Well, those cans. But they must be the ones that I gave to them. Oh, no. They didn't, this time. They didn't. Thank you, Miss Frank. Sorry, Kofi. Kid, we didn't know. We're sorry. Mr. McGinnis, I, I was going to fix it. Please, Mr. McGinnis, I... I want to tell you how I feel. Feel dirty? Maybe you feel sick? Don't say it. I know how you feel. You feel like breaking something. That's the way I feel. I'd like to break your neck, Mr. Kowalski. I'd like to take some of these good people here and crush them the way you would a roach. But I won't. No. I won't touch you. Or you, Mr. Prince. Or you, Dad.
I'm going home and get down on my knees and pray to God to be forgiven for what you're going to hear right now. now pay attention. Don't miss a word of it. It's something I forgot a long time ago. Eight years ago. What did I do with that last angle brace? Eddie, you see another angle brace down there? I need one to finish off this railing. There's one around here somewhere. What are you doing here? I thought I'd come by to walk you home, dear. I think it's pretty darn nice of me. Oh, you do, do you? Honey, i got to finish up here first. Oh, come on. It looks all right. Oh, I won't be long. Let's go home now. Okay. Just let me put my stuff away. Hiya, big boy. Hello, Billy. What are you grinning at, you little monkey? Look at me, neighbors. I helped kill my son. You hear me? His own father. Turn your backs and walk away from me. He was my boy. When I put that wrench away, that was the end of it. Just as though I sunk it into his head. He didn't just grin at it. A nice, fat, happy kid. He was six months old. Then he was eight years old. So fast. On his eighth birthday, I gave him eight wax on the behind and one to grow on. Then he said, Daddy, where's my present? I had to say, I forgot. He, he cried. I, I went down to the store the next day and I, and I got it, but he didn't come home that day. I forgot. We forget. We forget too much. We forget or, or we're too tired or too lazy or too scared to do the things that people got to do. They're, they're only little things. The kind of thing we, we, we yell at kids to do. They're not supposed to show us where we're wrong. We're supposed to show them. If we don't, who's going to save them from each other? Now listen to me. Pay attention. This can't happen again. We're human beings. We live together, right next door. We've got to live for each other or we're nothing. Now hear me. We've got to do better. I forgive you. Please, someone forgive me. 
Well, uh, <clears throat> I guess we can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> 